Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here and welcome back to the railway. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at some of the prairie locomotives available in model form. <music> The prairie wheel configuration seems to be very rare, particularly over here in the UK. When researching this video, I was only able to find six different classes of locomotive to use in this video, which has to make it one of the rarest wheel configurations. Which is quite a shame, because the prairie wheel configuration with the six driving wheels in the centre, surrounded by the two pairs of non-driven wheels on either side, lends them a very even and balanced look, which is quite pleasing, I think. Also, of course, the videos are now in 4K, so I can show you these locos in far more detail than I did before, which I'm also looking forward to. Right, so I've noticed that the manufacturer that makes the most prairies, at least according to my collection, is Backman. So we're going to start off with a Backman prairie, and it's one that is almost possibly unique, certainly unique in my collection. It is the only tender prairie loco I have in the collection, and it is the Backman V2, which I think is Backman's best prairie, in, in my opinion. The V2 was introduced in 1936 to the design of Sir Nigel Gresley, and it was the only prairie tender loco to ever be successful in real life, at least in Britain. I don't know whether there was an inherent problem or disadvantage to having prairies as tender locomotives, or perhaps it just wasn't really done, but either way it's quite a rarity because of that. 184 of these were built in total and they followed the same basic design of the Gresley Pacifics. And I guess you can certainly see a lot of the A1 and the A3 locos in the V2, particularly on the upper portion of the locos. This model itself from Backman is absolutely superb. This is the new tooled version, and the real thing about it is the livery. This is one of the richest, most pleasing LNER greens I've ever seen. It's just pristine, isn't it? The finish is gorgeous, the lining is great. I was just sold on this loco straight away. And the great level of detail just adds to how awesome this loco is. So it's got the full suite of features, loads of different separately fitted parts, an extremely detailed cab, and a really decent looking tender as well. It's not a loco I show all that often, so today it makes a well-deserved appearance. And of course, with it being a new toured loco with a nice modern chassis, it also performs really nicely once it's up and running. As you can see, nice and smooth, plenty of haulage. I mean, it's only got five coaches with it now, but it could easily haul quite a few more. And so it's the complete package, really. It looks great, it runs beautifully. As a Backman loco, I don't think it costs that much either. I mean, it was relatively expensive, but still quite affordable for what you get. I think part of that is due to the fact that it is a largely plastic model, not a lot of die cast on this one, but the weight is still okay thanks to the chassis, and as you can see there's really very little to complain about here. So that's why I think this is one of the better prairies you can get, and it's a real pleasure to own and look at and run. So that's a look at what I would say is Backman's best prairie, but what about their worst? This is an infamous locomotive that I looked at a few years ago, and you're about to see it again in full 4K. So I don't even know what to call this thing, because it doesn't seem to have a specific prototype, so I just call this the shoddy Backman American Prairie. In America, prairies seem to be far more common than they are over here in the UK, so the comments I'm making today about the rarity of prairies don't really apply as much in the States. In fact, over a thousand prairies were built in total over the years in the States, and it's unclear whether this particular model is of a specific prototype, um, as the model supposedly started off as an 060, and a different chassis with extra prairie wheels was later developed for the body. Uh, but to be honest, not much of that matters, because this model is horrific in most areas. And it's quite old, so that's fair enough. This is not a recent release from Backman, although I think they do still produce models with this body, or at least they did uh, last time I checked. But yeah, the body is just covered in moulded detail, and the details that are separately fitted are just dreadful. The bell looks like an absolute joke, 
and the cab detail is really feeble on this one as well. It's very, very flat looking, not at all convincing. All of the running gear looks quite chunky and nasty, and the chassis is so big and large that uh, it's just very clearly visible, even underneath the body. Yeah, not a nice prairie this one, but uh, it's always an entertaining piece, so I think worth showing. And frankly, the chassis is exactly as old and crusty as you'd expect it to be having looked at the bodywork. Yeah, it's an old split chassis mechanism with the plastic between the wheels, which can fail. I can't remember whether this one failed and I repaired it or not, but uh, as you can see, it's a bit of a wobbly runner. Looks like it's struggling even with three coaches. A perfect contrast, really, with the far superior V2 from Backman. But to be fair to it, the thing still works, which is a surprise. I don't know how it keeps working. I don't really care that much about this loco. It doesn't get the same care and attention and maintenance that the decent locos get. But there you go. It still works of a fashion. <laughs> So while that one goes down, I think we'll leave Backman for just a moment and move on to Dapol, who also made a prairie. Theirs was from the Great Western Railway, which I would say of the big four companies was the best known for their prairies. So this is the Great Western 6100 class, which was one of quite a few classes of large prairie. This particular one was introduced to the Great Western in 1931 to the design of Charles Collett, and 70 6100s were built in total for suburban passenger services, and they were used well into the British Railways era. And this model from Dapol is absolutely marvellous. A little bit like the Backman V2, the livery, the decoration, and the finish is all absolutely wonderful including the electroplated safety valve bonnet, which gives it that amazing shiny finish. The level of detail also is second to none here. It's got full features such as sprung buffers, gorgeous cab detail, nice fine looking coal, and a whole host of other stuff. If you want to check out the review of this loco, I will post it up in the top left because it is a real treat. And on the track, this one's not a bad runner either. It did have a few teething issues, the rear pony, had a problem where it took too much of the loco's weight and that had to be modified. Quite a few people have had that problem. I also found that the motor didn't have a great deal of torque to it and it's not the most powerful loco in the world given its weight. But I've had this for quite a while now and it still works. It hasn't slowed down too much. It's actually working rather well still. So there are better performers out there but it's still pretty decent and it is better than the Hornby Large Prairie, which I personally had a lot of trouble with. That one has even less torque and it can barely move itself at times with a load. So yeah, for me, this is the better of the Large Prairies. It's my favorite. I think it looks the best. It's got the most detail. It's the most innovative in terms of its features and its design. And it was also the least expensive. So the Large Prairie from Dapol, very, very lovely model. One of my favorites. As you're probably aware, there does exist a smaller sister to the Large Prairie, which is somewhat creatively known as the Small Prairie, or 4575. And to see this loco, we have to go back to Backman. So in real life, these were actually produced a little bit earlier than the Large Prairie we just saw. These were introduced in 1927, and a hundred of these were built, also to the design of Charles Collett, who updated an old church ward design to create the class. These were used for mixed traffic on branch lines until 1964, which was when the final example was withdrawn from service. And this model from Backman is getting on in years now, but it still has a decent level of detail. Uh, the livery is still lovely. It doesn't have the same quality finish that modern Backman and Dapol Locos have, but I don't think it's bad, that's for sure. And the quality of the build here is good. I think because it's a little bit simpler, it feels less fragile. There are less fine parts that might break off. And yet it's still got that good balance between detail and handleability, which I think is great. And the odd thing about this one is that it does have quite an old and outdated chassis and mechanism. But it still works flawlessly, which is quite unusual. Usually when you've got the sort of poorer quality mechanisms that manifests to an extent in the performance but I have to be fair where it's deserved and say that this loco really does run flawlessly so 
yes, it's a little bit out of date, but I still love the thing. You know, I don't have any complaints at all. It's a decent hauler, it's quite heavy, it can manage a decent length freight train, probably a lot larger than this one, frankly. Nice and smooth, good and quiet. It is DCC ready, so it's not that out of date. Yeah, it's a lovely, lovely prairie. It's hard to choose between this and the large prairie. I think the large prairie is a better model because it's newer and has a few more features, but an updated small prairie could easily take the title. And the future looks bright for the small prairie in model form because, of course, recently Rapido announced an all new small prairie tooling, which covers even more variants than the Backman one did. And knowing Rapido, this model should be produced to the ultimate modern standards. It should have more features, hopefully more detail. Maybe it'll be an even better runner. I don't know. But again, there's more from prairies in the future. Okay, so we've covered the Great Western Prairies now, so let's take a look at a prairie from the LMS with the IVAT 2MT. This prairie was introduced much later in 1946 for mixed traffic work on the LMS. The class was still built well into the BR era as well, as the final example wasn't built until 1952, by which time 130 2MTs had been built. These were very, very modern. They had self-emptying ash pans and rocking grates, which made them very efficient. They served mainly within the London and Midland region. The model itself is horrible, in my opinion. The body dates back decades, and the detailing very much reflects this. It has at least been decorated to modern standards, with decent printing on it and quite a nice finish, but that doesn't hide the flashing, the chunky details and the poor quality design that betrays how old this locomotive is. And yet the chassis and mechanism on this loco is the exact opposite of the body. It's been more recently updated, it's got proper bearings, nice modern decoder socket, decent motor and as a result it runs excellently. So you've got this really strange situation where you've got this old outdated model, not very impressive to look at, but you put it on the track, it runs like a 2023 Loco. Yeah, very, very strange. I wish they'd have retooled the whole thing rather than just the chassis, and then it would have been a great Loco. But still, it's a classic Prairie. I do like the 2MT. I think it's a nice design. In fact, I like all of Ivat's Locos. Interesting look to them. And with this one, you certainly can't fault the way it runs. It's a good hauler, nice and smooth, excellent crawl. I think when I reviewed it, I gave it a very good score indeed. So as a runner, it gets a thumbs up. Let's finish off then with one more prairie, and this is the most modern of them all, I would say. It comes from the BR era, and it is the BR Standard Class 3 from Backman. And interestingly, these were actually inspired by an IVAT design, not the 2MT that we've just seen, but rather the IVAT Class 4. 45 of these were built by British Railways in the early 1950s, and it is only the tank engine variant of the 3MT that was a Prairie, because the tender version was a Mogul with a 260 wheel configuration. The class survived barely 10 years, which is a pity, I think, um, before it was withdrawn and scrapped from 1964 onwards. This model, though, from Backman is absolutely sublime in its level of detail. It couldn't be more different from the 2MT. The livery is more complex, which is not necessarily a reflection of the quality of the model, but it does mean that there is more to talk about with this one. Look at the beautiful lining and the finish as well, all absolutely lovely. The level of detail is better as well, as you can see the number of separately fitted parts and the finesse in these separately fitted parts makes this loco far more convincing and realistic. The smoke box looks a lot finer, it's got sprung buffers, the cab detail is quite a bit better as well. Yeah, generally, this is the sort of model the 2MT should have been in terms of the attention to detail and the quality. And we're seeing the opposite thing again with this one in terms of performance. The body is lovely and modern, but the chassis is old and outdated and poor quality, and it does kind of show through in the performance. I did not give this such a good rating on performance in the review. Um, so, yeah, it's... It, what we've learned is that Backman Prairies are weird. They vary in quality and detail, and the mechanisms and the quality of the mechanisms are often opposite to the quality and detail of the bodywork. Except, of course, for that V2 that we saw at the start. That's why I say that one's the best, because it's more of an all-rounder. 
but still it looks okay at the higher speeds obviously nothing wrong with the way this is performing right now and it's still decently heavy so it can handle a fair number of coaches it's a very elegant thing i do like the uh, the standard prairie very nice so there you have it that was a close look at one of the rarer wheel configurations available in model form and honestly i'd love to see more of these things so what about you what are your favorite prairies are there any that i've missed that i have in the collection that i didn't spot please let me know what prairies would you like to see produced in model form do let me know down in the comments but for now i'll say thank you so much for watching you take care of yourselves and i'll see you all very soon for some more videos all right, cheers everybody, take care.